monsieur. Hello. Um, I have a bit of bad news. Brian Honan couldn't make it, but uh, our replacement will give the same presentation. Please come to the... Good evening, everybody. My name is Marie Bourne. I'm a 29-year-old female reporter. My birthday was the 27th of July, 1980. And for all you single guys out there, and maybe your married guys, I'm single. I have no boyfriend. And, uh, you know, I'll be in the bar later on, so please feel free to come up and talk to me. If you want to talk to me, these are things I like. And these are things you should use if you want to earn my trust and, you know, maybe have a bit of a chance. I love travel. Last year I went to Paris. Went for a weekend and I saw Jimi Hendrix's grave. And Jimi Hendrix is one of my music heroes. I also went with a girlfriend of mine over to, Par over to New York, and boy did we shop, and we loved the Apple Store, it was great. And if you're into music, I love 80s music. Anybody hear Kraftwerk? Yeah, you're right. there's a few guys out there I might have a chance with. Uh, <laughs> also, if you like knitting, I love knitting, it's what I do in the winter, it keeps me, my hands occupied, it's a great hobby. Photography. I have a lot of slides up on, and photographs up on Flickr, and you can look at my Flickr account all the time and see what, what, what I like doing. Uh, science fiction is another hobby of mine. I really love the science fiction books. Uh, I just love science fiction. They're particularly good. And anything to do with the paranormal, ghosts and goblins. And being Irish, we have a long history of uh, paranormal activity and a lot of legends and stuff, so it's, it's a particularly uh, uh, interesting topic of mine. For all you ladies in the, off in, in the audience, this is my blusher, Trab. It brings up that, you know, that glow girls that gets them excited. Well, that's, that's what I use, and it's quite effective too. I come from a small town in the middle of Ireland called Balik Moiler. And if you want to look at that on Google Maps, there it is. You can see it's just there, down outside a town called Carlow. So it's in the centre of Ireland. Lovely little place. Like every Irish town, it's got more pubs than shops, and more shops than churches, so uh, it's, a, it's a great place to be. These are my parents. My father's called Michael, and my mother's called Grace. Or, as my uncle's called her, and it's the nickname she's had for years, it's Goosey Goosey. I don't know why, but you know, maybe they couldn't pronounce Grace very well. My father worked for many years as the financial director of this particular company, August, Augusby and Butler. He worked there until of March last year where he resigned. So he's now enjoying playing golf and relaxing and spending his, his, his money. Thankfully he got his pension before the current crisis, but he's doing, he's doing okay. I myself, my work is I'm a technology journalist. I work for a number of publications in Ireland. One is siliconrepublic.com. It's an online publication specializing in technology, particularly in the corporate area. We're part of the Irish Independent Group. The Irish Independent is the second biggest newspaper in Ireland. So I do a lot of technology uh, articles for them. I'm, I'm the editor of the gadgetrepublic.com. Now, for all you geeks out there, I have the coolest job. I get all the gadgets. All the iPhones, all the Nokia phones, all the MP3 players, movie cameras. And my job is to play with them and to write an article about them. And it's really great. Before I got into all this technology, I used to spend time as the court editor for a company called Merrill Legal Solutions, so we'd write little articles about what would happen in the courts in Ireland. I done some work for PC Live magazine, which is an Irish magazine specializing on the domestic user. And I also do a lot of research for Dublin and Olivia FM. It's a small station, just a very small station in Dublin, and the program I work on there is on paranormal. So I go out and investigate paranormal activities in, in, in Dublin, ghost stories, etc. I went to school in a college in Carlow called St. Leo's College. That was my high school. I then got a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science in UCD. But, you know, despite where I am now, back in those days I didn't really see myself working with computers. So I then went on to uh, Griffith College and I'd done a degree in journalism. So thankfully the two of them have now merged together and I can have the two loves in my life, technology and journalism working, work, working together. And 
To advance that further, I am now studying digital media technologies in the Dublin Institute of Technology. To cap it all off, in 2008, I was voted the, te the Technology Journalist of the Year. My mother was very, very happy and very proud. So was I. But also in 2008, somebody stole my identity. Now for those of you who are a bit more observant in the audience, I actually am Marie. My name is Brian Honan, and despite Benny saying I couldn't be here. And in 2008, Marie approached me to see how much danger are we putting ourselves in by exposing personal information on the internet. It was during uh, October. In, in, in October, we have a week in Ireland called Identity Theft Week. And basically, it's trying to highlight the danger of identity theft to, to, to the public at large. So Marie wanted to write an article to make people aware of the dangers of social networks. That putting information up there could actually, in some way, shape or form, cause you some damage. So she asked me, Brian, you know, what risks are we exposing ourselves to by putting our information up on the internet, by having stuff on Facebook or on Twitter or on MySpace or Bebo or, or, or wherever else? And what could somebody do with that information they got? Now, Marie originally wanted me to be able to conduct a transaction on her credit card. But being an information security professional and one that likes my job, I didn't think that would be a very smart career move to be written credit card fraud, even if it was in the name of journalism. So I said to her, OK, let, leave it with me. Let me see what we can do and what information we can get. Now, there are certain rules I had to play by. Number one, I could only use information I found online. So I couldn't go to where she lived or where she worked and look for information that you'd find in a uh, garbage uh, bin or, or, or whatever. I couldn't approach any of her friends to ask any information about her. I couldn't social engineer anybody. I couldn't hack into any systems, so therefore I couldn't break the law. So basically all I could do and all I could use was information that I could find freely on the internet and that was publicly available. So information in effect that Marie volunteered and put on the internet. So, and the other trick was I had a week to do it because she wanted the article to go out during the Identity Theft Week, so I had a f f four or five nights trying and get this done. And this is how I stole Marie's ID. Now, I know some of you are probably going to say, well, has everybody heard of Multigo? OK. Multigo is a great tool. It'll, do a lot, it'll automate a lot of what I've done. But again, one of the rules was I couldn't use automated tools. So what information could, it, could I find? And these are the tools that I used. The, the biggest one and the most effective one, and, and if you're ever doing any penetration attacks or any social engineering attacks on the company or your own company, go to Google and see what you can find out about the people who work in your organization or indeed about other people as well. So Google was my first port of call. So I spent hours going through Google, doing searches for, for Marie Bourne, different combinations of it, trying to f come back and see what information I got. And with that information, you know, there was a lot of dead dead ends and, and, and misleads where there was other Marie Bournes that weren't related to her or in any way, shape or form. So I had to try and filter out the information specific to her. But that information, I was able to use it to go to other areas. So I knew that she was on LinkedIn. So I went on to LinkedIn. And that's where I got all the history about her career, where she'd worked and where she'd previously been. And also, to a certain extent, to what uh, colleges she, she, she'd gone to. I then went to those sites to see was there any information that I could find out about Marie, whether any awards she got or anything else that I could use. Uh, Amazon.com became a very useful tool. Through Amazon.com, I found out where her home address was. Now, Marie, uh, as you said earlier on, came from Carlow, which is a, a small town uh, in the middle of Ireland, and she's actually currently living in Dublin. I didn't know that until this particular uh, uh, exercise. But through Amazon.com, and through the wish list that people have up there and that Marie had up there, I was able to identify A, what books she likes, so I, was go I could do a background that she likes science fiction and into the paranormal, but B, she had a delivery address on that wish list, which was based in Carlo. There was also another gentleman on, on Amazon.com, Michael Bourne, who also had the same address. So I figured, that's a male that's related to Marie. That's a, her father or her brother. So there's a bit of information I was able to pick up from that.